Occupy Wall Street Day 6. There are still several hundred on the streets of New York's financial district. They are still ignored by those who presumably support them, by those who oppose them, by those who should seemingly just be reporting on them. Why? Back with Michael after Countdown's brief visit to Occupy Wall Street. We aren't going to put up with corporate corruption anymore. We aren't going to put up with corporate money in our politics, corporate money around the world, controlling everything, controlling all of our natural resources, controlling all of our lives. There's a lot of people here that realize something's wrong, but they don't know what. These big businesses like Bank of America and Exxon have so much influence over our government, they will never be held accountable until the people stand up and beg for justice. We can televise, you know, the... Um, all of the protests in the Middle East, but we can't, this is happening in our own backyard, you know, and, and why isn't this on TV? Why? There are a bunch of people basically gambling with all of our futures, and uh, I don't agree with that. I don't consent to that. Our politicians no longer represent us, the people. The, the voice of the people has not been heard. These people are out here talking about things that affect everybody. Problems with the banking system, problem with politics, um, my 401k plan, your 401k plan, the problems with how that all works. I lost my job and I lost my health insurance. Um, I'm, I sort of have a social safety net from the unemployment insurance, which citizens pay for. This is a difficult story to tell and that it's still an unfolding story. And that, I think until there's a compelling narrative of why people have decided to peacefully occupy Zuccotti Park, I think it's very hard to communicate that story to everyone else. Erica Ferrara got that for us. Thank you, Erica. Uh, continuing now with Michael Moore. I asked Will Bunch this question last night. Let me ask a version of it to you tonight. That's 2,000 or 500 or 50 Tea Partiers there protesting taxes or protesting stimulus or anything else they don't like on Wall Street. It's on the evening news, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, it w you wouldn't need that many Tea Partiers there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be the top story. Um, and, uh, and the same thing a couple of weeks ago when a thousand environmentalists were arrested at the White House. Uh, imagine a thousand Tea Partiers arrested. Uh, th this, um, I don't, I can't speak for why uh, the networks uh, have not covered this. This is really the very first, down on Wall Street, in the financial district, the very first attempt since the crash of 08 to, to uh, take a real stand and um, it's been powerful and, and I, gotta, I gotta believe that even though it may only number in the hundreds right now, this is gonna grow not only on Wall Street but in communities all over America and I would encourage people watching this show to think about, okay, you can't make it to New York City but there's a branch of Chase Bank in your town, there's mm -hmm. a branch of Bank of America and there's nothing preventing you from organizing a demonstration outside that branch with signs, uh, with possibly even civil disobedience, to make your voices heard. They think they're going to get away with this. These people who stole the pension funds of the American public, who stole their money, who stole the future of our kids and grandkids, they think they're kleptomaniacs and they think they're going to get away with it. They are. They have taken our democracy and formed it into a kleptocracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and if 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 we don't stand up, if we don't have our voices heard, they believe me, they're not done yet. There's a reason why corporate America, and I think you've pointed this out before, they're holding two trillion dollars of cash in their bank accounts. They've never done this before. Never held on to that much. Taken. They've taken that money out of circulation, and they're waiting. They know the other shoe's going to drop. And as Mayor Bloomberg said last week. He said there's going to be riots in the street. If we don't provide jobs right away, there are going to be riots. In the now, this is Mayor Bloomberg, mm -hmm. the billionaire, talking. All right, This isn't Michael Moore saying this. This is Mayor Bloomberg saying this. They know, and the smart rich know, they can only build the gates so high. And, and sooner or later, history proves that people, when they've had enough, aren't going to take it anymore. And it's much better to deal with it nonviolently now through the political system than what could possibly happen in the future, which nobody wants to see. The premise of, uh, or the pretext of the left-wing media exists to uh, mask the kind of right-wing media belligerence. I won't use the term bias, but it's belligerently right-wing. Uh, assuming that's not going to change, what do, what do the protesters in this group and other groups, as the ones you just suggested, what do they need to change, if anything, modify, improve, to make mm. the system bend to their will? I think there needs to be a, a, a many-pronged approach. Civil disobedience on Wall Street is one approach. 
uh, people doing things locally in their communities is another approach. People who are being foreclosed upon need to know that they can't find the original mortgage. The bank can't find it. I can tell you that right now because they split it up and they bundled it and put it into derivatives and nobody really owns your mortgage. So you should never leave your house. You should resist this as, as long as you nonviolently uh, uh, can. I think, Keith, here's the thing. There is so much rebellion that is percolating right now just under the surface. Agreed. All it's going to take, all it's going to take, and you and I probably, we can't predict when this is going to happen, how it's going to happen, but there's going to be a couple of holes that are going to go into that surface, and that is going to just, just come up like a geyser. And, and, and you're going to see massive public reaction against what's been done to their middle class life. The working poor of this country have suffered long enough, and, and they're not going to take it. And I think you know that. I know that. Mayor Bloomberg knows that. Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett knows that. And so they can keep talking about this all they want. But if there isn't serious action right away, what you see on Wall Street, that'll be known as that's where it began. And, you know, I went down there when I made my last movie. It was just me with some police crime tape. And I wrapped it around mm -hmm. uh, the stock exchange as my form of protest. And I was very nervous doing that because I saw the cops coming. And, and, uh, and I'm thinking, I, I saw one officer starts toward me. And I said, sir, I'm, I'm just really just making a movie. I'm just, just a little comedy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, said, and he, said, he said to me, that's okay, Mike. He said, these guys in here... They've lost so much money out of our police right. pension fund of, as a right. result of what they've done. Right. He said to me, you just, New York cop, he said, you just take all the time you want. <laughs> but I wanted to give you this time to react to this, this execution last night, the death of Troy Davis. Let me start by reading what you wrote on your website today, and then you can take it from there. I encourage everyone I know to never travel to Georgia, never buy anything made in Georgia, to never do business in Georgia. I will ask my publisher to pull my book from every Georgia bookstore, and if they won't do that, I will donate every dime of every royalty my book makes in Georgia to help defeat the racists and killers who run that state. I ask all Americans with a conscience to shun anything and everything to do with the murderous state of Georgia. To say that strong is to, is to understate it. Why does this case engender that reaction from you? A, a man was murdered last night in our name. You know, I'm part of this country. I may not be a resident of the state of Georgia, but last time I looked, Georgia was in the United States of America. And they murdered a man that they did not know uh, committed. There was so much evidence. So mm -hmm. many people have recanted their testimony. No DNA, no gun. No, I mean, it's just, it's just so... I'm just so outraged by this. I just got word before we came on the air. I asked my publisher this morning, I want you to stop shipping books of my book to, to Georgia. I want you to pull the books out of there. I don't want a dime being made. I don't want to make a dime off that state until that state acts to change things. And they just told me that uh, they, can't, uh, they can't recall the books. So I'm going to go to the next step then. I'm going to write uh, a, a big check uh, 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 to the Innocence Project who have gotten hundreds of people exonerated who are sitting in prisons. And, and since the Supreme Court reinstated the death penalty, well over 100 people uh, who were on death row, mm -hmm. who we were going to execute, we have d then discovered they were, they were falsely uh, convicted and they were let set free. They almost died. This Innocence Project is, is a great organization. I'm, I'm also going to uh, fund whatever I, uh, voter drives in Georgia. There's 600,000 African Americans in the last election that were not registered to vote. I will get behind whatever drive uh, there is in Georgia to register our, our fellow uh, Americans who are African Americans so that they have a chance to have their voice heard. This has got to be stopped. We are a civil, civilized nation, and yet we do not join mm -hmm. the other civilized nations of this planet when we do things like this. Yeah. They didn't just almost die. We almost killed them. That's the point, right?